Hey guys, my name is Nicolette Machile, also known as The Financial Bunny. Welcome to The Financial Bunny TV. This video today is brought in partnership with Yellow Card. They've got an amazing feature that I'm going to tell you about and it's called Yellow Pay. Now before I get into all of that, please do remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are, however, looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. So you remember a month ago, I had the beautiful opportunity of visiting Ghana. Accra, Ghana, an absolutely fantastic African country with so much hist history and historical sites and historical sightseeing that you should go and experience. However, you must make sure that you know the history behind it because if you don't, it's going to just seem like another museum, another historical place, another garden, another square that you are going to. So it's very, very important to make sure that before you go to Ghana, you do do a little bit of a historical you know, 101 course very quickly. Now, the beauty about Africa is that it's, it's, it's so unpredictable. Let me put it that way. So, you know, when you visit other countries, one of the biggest things that you do before you go is you are looking up the do's, the don'ts, what do you need to prepare, what should be, how do you greet in that language. I mean, those are things that I'm, I'm always like ready with every single time I visit any country where they obviously have their own um, um, indigenous languages and all of that. Where, I mean, when I, when I say they have their own indigenous languages, I mean, English is not the main language in those countries, right? So, I've visited a number of SADC countries in Africa, your Botswana's, you know, maybe your um, Mauritius, all of those countries. And it's been quite easy to be able to go and visit those countries, right? Um, and that's the thing about Africa is that sometimes there are certain challenges that you're going to be faced with. One majority of those countries do not have their own airlines and where they do have their own airlines, it first needs to go to their home country before it lands in another country, which kind of makes sense, right? So for instance, if you're flying South Africa, I mean, Kenyan airlines, it will go to uh, Nairobi first before it comes to South Africa. If you are flying to, for instance, um, Ethiopian Airlines, it will first go to Addis Ababa and then it will come to South Africa. Now, of course, with SAA sometimes failing us, its people, uh, one of the things that I found out is that SAA only flies in certain days directly from Accra, Ghana to South Africa. So when I was going, I flew SAA. But like, guys, let me tell you, SAA does not have Wi-Fi on that flight. And I just feel like any flight that's longer than two hours needs to have Wi-Fi. We're in 2023. So I asked the flight attendant, like, what is the deal with the Wi-Fi? And they're like, no, old fleet, can you get new fleet? And I'm like, well, Lele, is SAA even making a profit for them to be able to afford new fleet? You know, I was just like, Ish, you know what? I don't want an experience of what was that Malaysian flight M at MH370 that disappeared in the, in the, you know, and nobody can find that flight. So I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to sit here. But when I landed in Accra, I decided, you know what? Let me change my flight to Kenyan Airlines. Now, I was very much well aware of the fact that it's going to go to Nairobi first and then go to Johannesburg. Guys, on the morning of my flight, did Kenyan Airlines not cancel my flight? And I was like, I bought guys. Why are you canceling my flights? How must I get home? I need to be back in Johannesburg on the 6th of February. No, it wasn't the 6th. Was it the 6th? Yeah, the 6th of February, I think, yes. I needed to be back in Johannesburg, so I could not afford not to have a flight. So, of course, you know, um, Murphy's Law had to go back to SAA. But now, the flight that SAA has, is in con it's, it, it connects in Lagos. But the, the leg to Lagos is another airline. It's called World Airline something, something, something. I don't know what the hell that was. I must tell you, so now when you do your booking, you're doing it on SAA's platform, right? And then they'll book this World Airlines, whatever, whatever. Please, biggest joke of my life, I arrive at the airport and I'm nowhere on the list of the people that are flying to Lagos. I'm like, excuse me, what do you mean? They're like, go to the ticket place. I'll go to the ticket place, have this conversation. This guy's like, I can't find you. So now I got to prove that I actually did book this thing. And eventually, I take out my SAA booking confirmation and I show him. I'm like, I'm supposed to be on the flight. Guys, he literally wrote on a piece of paper, please allow Miss Mashile onto this flight. Welcome to Africa, okay? Here, yeah, you don't take anything seriously because if you do, I promise you, you are going to have a hernia. Anyway, eventually they get me on the flight, which is another, it should have been the red flag. Because why is SAA in partnership with this airline, yet they're not managing the whole process? Because at the end of the day, ultimately, I'm an SAA customer and not really a world airline. But anyway, flights were supposed to leave at half past five. Now we're at the boarding gates and we're waiting. No flights. They're saying it's raining, so the flight is going to be delayed. I'm like, hmm, okay. So now in my head, I'm starting to do the mathematics. Okay, I need to be 
in Lagos by 10 o'clock because my flight leaves at 20 past 10, which means book boarding is probably an hour before, which means boarding is probably around half past nine, right? I'm like, okay, I still have time. If this flight is like an hour, it means half past, let's say it's late by six o'clock we leave, seven o'clock I'll be in Lagos. No problem. We chill. The flight is still late. Now I'm starting to panic because I'm like, okay, because now I've been told it's another second red flag. So when you get to Lagos, you've got to get your bags and recheck them into SAA. Why are they not just passing my bag on to the guys at SAA? Because I am in transit. Anyway, it's fine. So now I'm trying to make time for customs because I heard Nigerian customs is crazy. And then also I'm making time for fetching my bags and rechecking it in, right? Okay, shop. Guys, the flight is still late. Half past six, Yanjula. Poo. Gone. I'm like, no, now I'm starting to panic. Because half past seven, still need to check out, get through customs. Let's say 40 minutes of customs. And then again, still need to go check in. I'm going to miss my flight. Guys, the flight arrived at quarter two. Quarter to seven. Here's one thing I did not bargain for. The fact that Lagos is actually an hour ahead of Accra. So essentially, my thinking, if I leave at quarter to seven, I'm going to land at quarter to eight. I'm landing at quarter to nine. Quarter to nine. Anyway, while we're in this little car, you know that car that takes you from um, um, building to flight. While with this car, I hear a man, and he's making like plans when he gets to Lagos for someone to stand in the queue for him to get through customs fast. I'm like, this is my dude. So I go to him and I'm like, oh, sorry, sir. I am a damsel in distress. I need you to help me. He's like, uh-uh, everybody for himself. But he was joking. So he helps me, takes my passport. When we land, he, he gets his guy. The guy takes my passport, takes his passport. But remember, I have a South African passport. So the guy at, the, at, at, at customs now, we're in front of the line. They stamped his passport. He goes through, comes to mind. They're like, where's her transit visa? I'm like, guys, I, I'm, I, I'm in transit, yes, but I'm not, my flight is literally now, so I'm not leaving your airport. What do I need a transit visa for? That gentleman was like, uh, uh, we need transit visa. Now, in hindsight, I realize what transit visa means. Transit visa means you should have put some nairas or some dollars in your passport and given to him. But now, I did not know, right? Fine. Guys, now I'm standing there and they're just taking my passport and they're moving it around. They're moving my passport around. They're moving my passport around. I'm like, yo, kolon kolon, what do I do here? Because also you've got these perceptions about Nigeria that, you know, we all have um, that are very false, but you've got them. And you're standing there and you're like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be stuck here because I'm actually afraid, you know, because I don't know when the next flight is. So eventually the gentleman comes to me and he's like, you know what? Here's a guy who's going to help me. Guess what time it is now, ne? Now it's, now, it's, now it's quarter past nine. Quarter past nine. I still have to go wait for my bag. Let me tell you what saved me. One, this amazing gentleman who got me through the... We were running in that airport. Two, he was even pulling my bag for me. Three, the fact that I had downloaded my actual boarding pass. But now, I have no connection. This man hotspotted me to download my boarding pass, guys. He was absolutely fantastic. He took me to try and get my bag checked in. They said, no, can't check in anymore. Check in is closed. Ran to the gate. We ran to the gate. Got to the gate. Now they're trying to get my bag through those little scanner things because remember, it's supposed to be checked in. It's too big to be hand luggage. This man took out stuff for my bag. He packed me, repacked my bag for me so they could see what's in my bag. Guys, what an absolutely fantastic man. Now at that point, I didn't have a single thing to give this man. Now, you know, in African culture, we show our gratitude. I didn't have anything to show to give him. I had literally this piece of paper that I was holding, and it is actually my check out, whatever, from Kempinski Hotel in Accra. And I asked this man to write his number down. And if you look here, you can see he wrote his number down. I'm going to cover some part of it. And I said to him, I'm going to make a plan when I get to South Africa to say thank you. Shut Get back to South Africa. How do I say thank you? I don't have his bank account details. I have nothing. I simply have a number. Then I find out that there is a feature on the Yellow Card app, and it's called Yellow Pay. And basically, you can send money across the African continent. They are currently in 17 countries. Here's where the kicker is for me, the best part of using Yellow Pay. It is instant, and it comes at no fee. I was like, oh, excuse me. So literally, all I got to do is I got to save this guy's number, send him a WhatsApp to say, please download Yellow Card. On the Yellow Card, please activate your Yellow Pay or activate your Yellow Card app, basically, is to get yourself verified and all of that stuff. I'm going to send him money from my Yellow Card app 
South African rands, and he is going to get that money in Nigerian Naira because I'm sending it to Nigeria. So you can send to Ghana, the Ghana Sedi. You can send to Botswana. They'll get it in the Botswana Pula. You can send to basically any of the 17 countries that Yellow Pay is operating in through Yellow Card. Absolutely fantastic. So if you do want to actually just send money across the African continent and you want it to be instant, and I know sometimes you buying something from somebody, sometimes it's a family member that you want to send money to, sometimes it's your helper. You know, maybe your helper has gone back home um, and they quickly need you to help them out and send some money. You can do it and it is instant and it is free and it is absolutely easy on the Yellow Card app. You've got to download the Yellow Card app verify yourself and then you can send money now they've also got a very awesome competition i don't know if you guys remember when i tried out bitcoin at some point <laughs> remember when i tried out bitcoin and then and then i left my money there and then in 2020 or before 2020 bitcoin went to like half a million rand and all the bitcoin enthusiasts were telling us oh my god it's 500 000. no they were not even saying 500 000 because they wanted it to have full impact and they were like bitcoin is worth one million half a million rand yeah okay so bitcoin obviously has gone through a couple of fluctuations like any other asset class um this is obviously a digital asset bitcoin is a cryptocurrency it's a digital asset so it's gone through its fluctuations and currently i think it's just crossed over four hundred thousand again um and there's a competition on the yellow card app basically you gotta download the yellow card app you gotta get yourself verified you gotta upload some money right and if you transact with 200 rand or more you stand a chance to win one full bitcoin how fantastic is that so get onto the yellow card app download it so you can either use it to buy sell trade your cryptocurrencies they've got two current cryptocurrencies there they've got the usd tether which is one-on-one -on -one to the usd dollar which is absolutely amazing if you just want to keep your money in dollar um, um valuation you just buy the stable coin called the usd tether or you can actually buy trade or sell bitcoin itself um i've got a couple of bitcoins that i'm keeping on the yellow card app just to see you know what's what's happening with bitcoin i'm doing a, a buy and hold strategy did i say a couple of bitcoins a couple of partial bitcoins please hey don't come don't come for my bitcoin uh, uh, address and try to scam me and steal my bitcoin i've got a couple of partial bitcoins right so yeah, I think it's quite fantastic. I'm really excited. I hope that this gentleman will download the Yellow Card app and so that I am able to say thank you to him. I don't even think it's a payment, um, although, of course, Yellow Pay is for payments. I don't think it's a payment. I think it's, a, it's my way of saying thank you because if that Good Samaritan had not helped me, I would have not gotten out of Nigeria in time for me to make my meeting. I think more than anything, it's just when you are distracted and you're in another country you don't have accommodation you don't have a plan to be able to come back things start to look very scary and when there's somebody that just comes out of the blue in the kindness of their heart to help you that's fantastic there's actually another gentleman who was part that guy that i found in the car he was also absolutely instrumental in making sure that i am transiting through nigeria as safely as possible but also you know um the kindness that was shown to me was absolutely fantastic so i will see you guys on the next one Please do let me know if you are using Yellow Pay to send your money across. Tell me how it goes. Bye.